person-centered support. The person is the profile and strengths. The centered aspect is the contexts and concerns. The support aspect is the strategy and practices. This model is a way of reading or understanding behavior support plans. This video is produced for disability support workers in Australia under the NDIS National Disability Support Scheme. I'm Dr. Joseph Randolph Bowers. We're discussing today basically how to read a behavior support plan and particularly a comprehensive plan under the National Disability Scheme Com Commission standards. There's several parts that make up a comprehensive behavior plan and at first glance it can be very confusing. I've broken it down into the three component parts, the PC, S aspects of a behavior support plan. The first aspect is the participant information and this ideally being a strength-based approach will look at the individual strengths, life interests, dreams, aspirations, their likes and dislikes, their communication capacities. It'll look at their their contexts and concerns as well. So we'll get into their communication skills, both receptive and expressive. Receptive relates to the capacity of a person to receive communication verbally and non-verbally. Expressive is their capacity to communicate directly through verbal means or non-verbal means. This will include their default communication style or their, and or their agreement style. It will also look at their sensory systems and how their uh, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic systems, their olfactory and gustatory systems interact with their behaviors of concern. It may also look at their nonverbal capacities and certain clients are predominantly nonverbal, so this might become a quite important area to look into. This aspect of the behavior plan will also look at the social and emotional well-being of the person. In other words, how they interact socially and how they process their emotions and how this works for them in their daily life. The developmental history and early development, family, institutional systems, their transitions, adult relationships, and their aspects of social isolation and or integration into the community will also be explored in their developmental capacities. Informal supports and uh, family systems will also be explored in this way through their behavior support plan analysis. Their primary disability diagnosis will also be uh, clearly laid out at this time in the behavior plan. And their sensory processing and emotional regulation capacities will also be discussed. Along with this, we look at their community activities, activities of daily living, related mainstream services, and what assessments may have been completed to date. The concern section of the behavior plan will look into behaviors of concern. For example, socially overt behaviors, recent histories of self-harm, a description of the behaviors of concern and their function. Uh, in other words, uh, an hypothesis related to the function of the behaviors of concern and a formulation of what these what these uh, hypotheses may look like and how it can practically help or assist family and staff to support the individual. The formulation is really an important area. We don't really have time to go into that here, but it is an, a central aspect of the behavior plan that um, disability support workers need to understand. Once you understand the basic or underlying functional reasons why behaviors occur, then you have a much more um, ability to support and direct interventions. This section of the behavior plan may also look at other underlying types of issues, for example, food, diet, and behavior. And the goals for the behavioral plan will also be explored. We'll look at community participation, self-care, hygiene, social and emotional wellness strategies,
and a number of other issues that may arise for the provider and the staff engaged in the plan. So these goals are oriented towards measuring outcomes, but also motivating the staff and the family support systems around the individual. The measures to assess the plan will be laid out so that everybody involved, all of the stakeholders, can have their part in actually um, creating positive outcomes for the plan. Ecological support strategies and skill building strategies ought to be explored at this stage and the behavior plan becomes very practical. So we look at incident response strategies. These strategies are usually organized in stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four types of schemes. This model allows for low to medium, high and very high, if not extreme, behaviors of concern in their escalation cycles from low to medium to high, and what the recovery stage might look, look like uh, as, the, as the behaviors dissipate. Also, the uh, behavior plan will get into discussion of restrictive practice. So in a comprehensive NDIS schedule, there may be a restrictive practice section at the end of the plan where the particular restrictive practices will be laid out and discussed. Um, and these sections of the plan will also look at fading out strategies, in other words, ways that we can prevent or help to mitigate the uh, behaviors of concern and how these can be changed over time. Basically, that is the extent of the, um, of the behavior support plan. What we need to emphasize at this stage is that all of these various aspects of the behavior plan relate to these three sections that we outlined at the beginning, the person at the center and the supports that are around that individual. So if we, uh, if we read the behavior plan in light of, of the person-centered aspects, the detail and the, the complexity of the behavior plan becomes more manageable and immediately more easily understood so you can have the most complex and comprehensive plan that may run, you know, up to 40 pages or more for um, disability staff uh, on the ground. And yet understanding these three fundamental areas and these four focus points really engages and helps to understand how we center our support our work around the individual, much like the potter centers the clay on the wheel. So we've had this discussion, very interestingly enough, while watching this video um, of centering clay on the potter's wheel and uh, making a vessel of clay. You can see that there were some mishaps along the way. and The potter had to take the wheel off and reorient it, uh, make sure that it was secure, and try to center that pot yet again. And the pot may have gotten a bit wobbly here or there through the process, but the potter keeps at it and keeps working towards that goal of creating a final outcome. That is a centered and well-constructed um, pot that um, is in its own right beautiful and um, has its own integrity, its own expression or personality. And the same goes for our work um, in supporting individuals. We seek to center ourselves, but also to center the work, to center the efforts and in interventions around the individual so that they really make sense, that they fit, that they um, actually support and not diminish what the individual needs in their daily life. Thank you so much for your time today and we wish you all the best.